In the past, some fire extinguishers used carbon tetrachloride as an extinguishant. Most of these extinguishers worked like a hand pump. The handle can be used as a pump, where after the carbon tetrachloride would come spraying out of the bottom. When carbon tetrachloride comes into contact with fire, it immediately vaporizes and expands, driving off all the oxygen resulting in the fire to stop. This is also the reason that it is only used outside, otherwise any remaining people inside would also die from oxygen deprivation. Be careful not to breathe the fumes. Carbon tetrachloride is extremely toxic, causes liver damage and cancer, and it is also a potent greenhouse gas and an ozone depleting substance. This is why it has been banned since 1987, along with other ozone depleting substances. Nowadays, it is relatively expensive and difficult to obtain, but considering extinguishers don't get used often, unused carbon tetrachloride extinguishers still exist, and it is possible to extract and distill it from them. So, for this video, I managed to find three old fire extinguishers that contain carbon tetrachloride. So the first two are large brass pump extinguishers, which should contain around a liter of carbon tetrachloride each. And secondly, we have a pressurized canister, which should contain about 150 milliliters. I will just go the easy way and open the extinguisher with a wrench, since the pump mechanism is jammed. So it actually opened up relatively easily and it could just be poured out. I was actually surprised that the liquid was still clear. This extinguisher was also in good condition, so that's probably the reason. So moving on to the second brass extinguisher. This one is a little bit more rusted. We also know for sure that this one has never been opened before, since the seal is still intact. So first off, I cut the seal with a wire cutter and then try to open it the same way as before. So now I will also pour out the contents of this extinguisher and this one is definitely not as clear as the other one as you can see. And it's getting everywhere. Anyhow, moving on to the next one, the pressurized canister. I was afraid this one was going to spray everywhere, so excuse the poor camera work. We can even hear it depressurize, but luckily it did not spray carbon tetrachloride all over my fume hood. So I guess there was not enough pressure to get out the carbon tetrachloride, and the hole was too small to let the air in. So I just made a new bigger hole by hammering a screwdriver into the top. So again, we have a dirty liquid coming out, and I added this to the liquid from the second extinguisher so they can be distilled together. So now, in total, we have around 2 liters of carbon tetrachloride, which we can set up for a regular distillation. First, I will be distilling over the clear carbon tetrachloride from the first extinguisher. The boiling point of carbon tetrachloride is 77 degrees Celsius, and it is also very volatile, so we can easily distill all of it over. During the distillation, we should see the thermometer show around 77C, otherwise it is likely not carbon tet. If the temperature increases beyond 77C, it would mean something else is also coming over, so we keep a close watch to see if any impurities are also distilled over and end the distillation early if needed. So to start the distillation, we can just put on the heating and the stirring. Since the flask is so large, I insulate it with some aluminum foil to retain the heat. Very quickly it started coming over, and the thermometer indeed reads around 77C, so it is for sure the carbon tet that is coming over. The carbon tet came over so quickly that it was still a little bit warm, so I put an ice bath under the receiving flask to cool it down. After a while, I swapped out the receiving flask for a larger one, so I don't have to keep swapping it out. So when no more liquid came over, I checked the flask and it was actually completely dry and the temperature of the thermometer didn't increase either. So this carbon tet was likely already quite pure. So to continue, I will be adding the dirty carbon tet to the flask and start distilling that over as well.
The distillation of the dirty carbon tet went the same, but it left behind some brown junk in my flask. So now that we have distilled our carbon tetrachloride, I will be transferring it into a new flask so I can use it another time. It is likely that this carbon tet contains some water impurities, so it is possible to dry it with molecular sieves or another drying agent, but for now it is not necessary. So if you are looking to get some carbon tetrachloride, this was a relatively good way to get it. It seems that anhydrous carbon tetrachloride goes for around 1600 euros for 2 liters without shipping. So getting it from an old extinguisher and doing the purification yourself is likely a lot cheaper and doesn't require having a company to be able to order it. All extinguishers together cost me about 160 euros including shipping.